It's now my pleasure to introduce today's fourth and final panel, which is on the role of parents, advocates, and youth-serving organizations. This panel will be not moderated by my colleague, Dr. Natoki Ford, who is a senior policy advisor at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Natoki oversees all of our national efforts to raise visibility and improve the image of science, technology, engineering, and math fields and careers. She is also a former actress and teacher, and she has a PhD in experimental pathology from Harvard University. That is all true. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Natoki Ford. There are 600,000 unfilled jobs in the information technology sector alone. Women make up half of the country, but are only 29% of uh, science and engineering professionals. When it comes to men and women of color, it's even worse. It's 11%. We actually have less women that are working in computer science and, and mathematical occupations than we did 20, 30 years ago. To my immediate left is Meredith Walker, who is the executive director for Amy Poehler's Smart Girl, Girls, Laurel Wider, who is the founder and CEO of Wonder Crew. Next to her is Ana Flores, who is the founder and CEO of Latina Bloggers Connect. Next is Charlie Capen, co-founder of HowToBeADad.com. <laughs> Lastly, and not least, is Dr. Yalda Ools, who is the Director of Creative Community Partnerships at Common Sense Media and also the author of Media Moms and Digital Dads. I'd like to now move on to Charlie, who will tell us about his work and his own personal story with um, gender and stereotypes for sure. fathers. Yeah, so let's talk about dads for a minute. Yes. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so these are my sons, Finnegan and Arden. Uh, this, this photo was taken a couple of years ago, as you can tell by my hairline. Um, they're now two and six, and uh, raising them is one of the most important things to me in my life. Um, I was raised with a unique upbringing um, where I got a lot of perspective on gender and roles. I was raised by a single mom, uh, a single working mom who worked day and night to provide for my brother and I. And uh, it gave me a, a first-hand account of what gender disparity looks like. And especially in uh, the, the radio field, where it, at that time it was especially was sort of a boys club. So she had to work harder to overcome these disparities. And it was something that then I wanted to bring my perspective, that perspective to, to these two guys, right? Um, and it's interesting because all the dads that I connect with online uh, and offline, we are sort of shocked by what our kids bring back to us. We try to have these open conversations about gender and stereotypes and bias, and they still come back to us with, you know, for boys, some misogyny or some really antiquated ideas, and it's sort of contradictory to everything we're trying to do. So uh, I, I've talked to dads of daughters who've had experiences in grocery stores where they see the magazine covers where the women are draped over an active man looking super ripped. And these daughters are asking the questions, why does she look that way? Why does she look bored? Or why is she in the background? <laughs> I would too. Um, and it's not just remained to girls, but also to boys. My son Finn came home one day. Um, he signed up for an amazing after school class uh, called Yoga and Chocolate which I would like to do personally. Um, yeah, I mean, it sells itself, really. Um, so he came home one day, though, really upset because all the girls had basically bullied him out of the class. He was the only boy in the class. And that really hurt my heart. Um, so we see as parents that kids are more nuanced than we give them credit for. And they have, they just don't conform simply to these gender stereotypes. They want to be heroes. They want to be firefighters. They girls want to be anything they want to be and so do boys and when brands take this into account they're looked at as standouts they're looked at and we cheer them on as fathers we say yes this is something we want for our daughters and our sons we want to see this inclusivity and we definitely cheer you on so thank you for that uh, especially seeing the brands today um, but what about boys they seem and some great panelists today about boys when they cross this invisible line of gender sort of groove something happens. Um, let's move to the next slide. This is my son Finn meeting his cousin Sullivan for the first time. Uh, he did not freak out. He was not a bumbling dad stereotype. He held this baby in his arms and said, I will not let anything hurt you, Sully. He said, I will, I will protect you. 
that's not something that's marketed to him. That's not something that's necessarily even taught to him at school. It's something that is part of who he is. It's a nuance, and kids are way more nuanced than we give them credit for. So how do we talk to men? How do we talk to dads about this conversation? You know, as a writer and a father, I'm trying to bridge this gap. I'm trying to bridge this gap between who our kids really are and the toys and images they see and, and participate with. And I'm trying to help dads help to bridge that gap because we want to be partners with women to even up this playing field. And if we're going to teach boys anything, we can teach them how to be better partners. So for us on how to be a dad, we use a lot of humor because humor acts as a sort of uh, anesthesia before the surgery. We can get in and do the work, you know, by being self-deprecating and sharing our failures. And by having an open conversation like that and showing that we're still learning, we can encourage a much more open conversation because it's not always easy and men aren't necessarily brought up to have these conversations but I tell you we talk to hundreds of thousands of dads we've reached hundreds of thousands of dads at a time and they're ready they want to discuss these issues they want to be part of this process and you know I, I think in fact that it's a masculine thing to do to talk about gender and equality I would just say in the end Humor plays a huge part of these really serious discussions, at least for dads, and that our help is yours. You know, consider us, include us, and we're here to partner up as best we can. Wonderful, thank you. And yoga and chocolate sounds amazing. I'm so do sorry it. that- They do yoga and then they get chocolate. There's nothing- <laughs> Is this a national franchise or? <laughs> okay. Um, but no, but you raise so many important points and I think one the the role of the father in this is often not emphasized enough and so I think the work you're doing is great so thank you so much for sharing your perspectives and, and what you're doing I just have a few things and they're all things that I'm working on myself so by no means am I the perfect dad of all time um, ask the first thing is being aware of your own issues I think a, a lot of times part part of the thing that I want to do is try to avoid passing on my stupidity to my sons so if I feel in myself what something that is in, inhibiting them in some way or I feel uncomfortable I think it's important to ask yourself why do I feel this way uh, is this helpful does this make sense all questions my wife asks me when I'm acting weird <laughs> you know and making isms visible also because you know sexism racism these things need to be talked about. We need to have open conversations. Uh, I know there are studies that show that if we create a vacuum and don't fill that vacuum with information and teaching, those things are more likely to take hold. So being comfortable and, and, and talking openly. And then also something that I learned from a couple friends of mine, Mike Adamick and Mike Reynolds, who are amazing writers in this space. They have daughters. They said they check their pronoun usage. If they don't know the gender uh, of the person they're referring to, if it's a lawyer or a doctor, they say she, as a matter of course. They don't want to be conditioned to say he. It's a subtle thing, but it can have a massive impact. Another thing is being open to their gender expression. So let them guide you. They're often asking us questions, not because they want to get the answers. Kids are nuanced. My son often asks me questions that he knows the answer to, so he gets confirmation or validation from me. So sometimes I'll bat it right back to him, not because I'm lazy, but because I want to hear his thought before I answer him and give him a chance to speak. Um, and then finally, pushing boundaries. Uh, if your son wants to do ballet, don't fight it. Follow it. See where it goes. Be a partner with your children to express themselves and be open to that expression and find your expression within that. Because within the context of that, I have this theory that the things I have the most trouble with, and I'm by no means any doctor of any kind, as everyone else on these panels has been. <laughs> but I have this theory that I have the most trouble with my kids about things that I'm working on in myself. So I think that we have to be open to the adventure of parenting and let it change us and change with our kids. And, you know, if we do that together, we can push our own boundaries and become more comfortable because this conversation, like we said, is gonna to continue to evolve well past whatever, however we define gender today. So 